US President Joe Biden kicked off his re-election campaign last week. But in true Biden style, it wasn't without mumbles, bumbles and gaffes. Sky News All-Stars Rita Panahi, James Morrow, Chris Kenny and Paul Murray explain why the 80-year-old should be in a nursing home and not on the campaign trail. Yesterday, the president travelled to North Carolina to visit the recently renamed Fort Liberty to sign an executive order. And sadly, things did not go well. Here's just 10 seconds of the president staring into space, looking utterly bewildered and disorientated. Everybody cross their fingers. <laughs> and this is, if it does not work, this is a great opportunity to show you how our students have to troubleshoot things. So. Oh dear <laughs> me, it did not get much better when he said a few words, or at least tried to. Nash County, uh, uh, Ed, 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 excuse me, Edgecombe uh, County. The president also repeated the lie that his late son, Bo, died in Iraq. And then the new administration came in, and in the meantime, things changed in our life and our family. I lost my son. We lost our son in, in Iraq anyway. <laughs> Biden keeps repeating that lie in speeches. He's uttered it at least four times this year alone. The truth is his son did not die in Iraq. He died in Maryland. As with every Joe Biden appearance, there's the befuddled president becoming hopelessly disorientated on stage after ending his speech, unsure of what to do and where to go. Have a look at this performance and ask yourself, is this man fit to sit in the Oval Office? Yes, he's uh, completely at sea until a helper comes to his aid and mercifully directs him off stage. That man belongs in a nursing home, not in the White House. But Biden also made a confused comment during a gun control event where he bizarrely made reference to the Queen of England, according to Rita Panahi. President Biden concluded his speech with a bizarre God save the Queen comment. That would be the Queen who passed away in September. Old Joe was at her funeral, and yet we got this yesterday. All right, God save the Queen, man. Come and get him. And of course, it wouldn't be a Biden speech without the president becoming hopelessly confused about where he is and where he should be going before and. Aid comes to his rescue. My God. Sky News host James Morrow also struggled to make sense of the president during one of his speeches this week. But first, how bit of Joe Biden talking about? Well, you tell me. We've got to keep it up. We've got to double down right now. It's only going to get harder from here. But it's closer. But it's going to get harder. The word is, as I said again, inflection point. Inflection point, huh? Is that what the kids are calling it these days? Beats me. As well as verbal stumbles, the president is facing physical obstacles, with Sky News host Chris Kenny revealing Joe Biden is struggling to stay upright. The verbal stumbles are no longer Joe Biden's biggest problem, are they? He's flat out staying on his feet. Have a look at this mashup. All the pretty girls walk like this. Yeah, he's now a social media punchline. Surely he won't run. 
And Sky News host Paul Murray, together with contributor Megan Kelly, has voiced concern for the president, saying his physical and cognitive decline is cruel and sad. Highlight of the week is to talk to Megan Kelly. And Megan, you must be so proud of President Biden. I mean, he just keeps he just keeps keeping on, even when he fall o- falls over and the White House desperately tries to say he didn't hit his head. I mean, that's a wonderful thing to be very, very proud of, that, uh, you know, you've got this fit man running the country. You know, you always say he's the only man in the world who can fall up the stairs. And now here he goes, falling down right on the stage, allegedly because he tripped on a sandbag. And the thing is, look, once this starts, it doesn't stop. You know, when you are 80 years old and you start falling, you don't get better. You don't get stronger. You go into your 80s the way you're going to be. And that's probably the best you're going to be. And so while I'm very sorry for President Biden that he's having this deterioration, I'm more sorry for us that if something happens to him, we're stuck with her. And the one thing that seems to unify us across partisan lines here in the United States is we don't want her. She's the last person we want. And what if what if this goes on, Paul? I mean, think about him. This is how he is right now, six years out from the point he'd be when he ended his second term, if he were to be reelected. Six years. Imagine this man who is having trouble stringing sentences together, making sense, knowing who's alive, who's dead, including sometimes himself, <laughs> falling down, endangering himself around every turn. Like, imagine that person Um, six years from now, how he's going to be. And leader of the free world, right? The commander in chief with access to the nuclear codes. That's if he makes, that's best case. Worst case is let's let's look at him two years from now when we're about to vote for the next president. Um, And he has a fall right before the 2024 election. That would ruin it. That would absolutely ruin his chances if he had a bad fall right before. And the Democrats would be stuck with him. And then they're really going to be sorry that they elevated Trump, who they hate so much. They really better be careful with the game they're playing on the Republican side with Trump and their absolute refusal to entertain any alternatives to Joe Biden on the Dem side. And Joe Biden has some bold infrastructure plans. This week, the president announced he wants to build a railroad across the Indian Ocean. Now, class, it's time for a little lesson in geography and economics, courtesy of Professor Joe Biden. This week, the president revealed a bold plan for an engineering project that just might rival the Sydney Harbor Bridge. Oh, yeah. Have a listen to this. Well, we're going to win and we're going to help. We have plans to build a railroad from the Pacific all the way across the Indian Ocean. We have plans to build in... In, in, in Angola, one of the largest solar plants in the world. I could go on, but I'm not. I'm going off script. I'm going to get in trouble. A railroad from the Pacific all the way across the Indian Ocean, Joe. My, that's impressive. If you thought running railroad track across quicksand was tough, try the ocean. And even Hollywood celebrities weren't spared, with James Morrow revealing some creepy comments the president made about actress Eva Longoria. He's also making creepy jokes about Hollywood actress Ava Longoria. We've known each other a long time. She was 17, I was 40. What? What? Okay, hey man, never hear of me too? Stuttering and stammering are the least of Sky News commentators' worries when it comes to Joe Biden. With James Morrow revealing a new report which alleges systemic corruption within the Biden administration. And finally, Robert, I can't let you go without asking you about the latest news out of the corruption cases uh, that are brewing under the surface around the Bidens. Latest is that there was alleged coercion of a foreign national connected with Ukrainian energy firm Burisma to pay $10 million in bribes, according to individuals familiar with the investigation into the FBI's handling of the confidential human source report they have on that. What's the latest? And... Given everything we've just talked about, is this going to continue to be squelched because there's another agenda? I mean, I think I, I think it will continue, sadly, to be squelched. Uh, but it does raise major questions about what we're doing right now in Ukraine in certain respects, because Ukraine keeps coming back to the centerpiece of the bribery allegations concerning uh, Joe Biden and his son and other family members. And there's apparently, according to Senator Grassley, 17 tapes that record these conversations that even include 
uh, then Vice President Biden being recorded on these tapes. It would fit the modus operandi. I mean, during the Ukrainian this Ukrainian time frame, you had a lot of oligarchs that got a lot of their uh, riches from government connections, from questionable banks. Uh, that was what uh, Biden was put in charge of running after what some people call the Maidan coup, other people call the Maidan revolution. However you term it, there was a lot of free reign going on, a lot of investigations that got shut down. And after Biden gets involved, the Burisma investigation gets shut down, billions at stake in, in various forms of fraud. So $10 million bribe sounds almost reasonable, sadly. Mm. So uh, it's very believable and credible that this occurred, given the history of Biden, given what we know about what was happening in Ukraine at the time, given the independent verification from third party whistleblowers and apparently authenticated tapes, according to Senator Grassley, who hasn't well, been known to just you know spout anything. So it looks well, like we have systemic corruption with the Biden administration. And when asked about these allegations by the press, Joe Biden was visibly frustrated. <laughs> and he is getting testier and testier at the press, at least some parts of it, zero in on his family's corrupt dealings with Ukraine. Dumb question? Well, maybe, maybe not. In another serious issue, Rita Panahi is concerned about Joe Biden's support for radical bills that involve children. But first, let's check in with that supposed devout Catholic himself, the leader of the free world, Joe Biden, who believes children, and we are talking little kids in primary school here, can change their gender. Indeed, the president has recently been lashing out at what he calls hateful bills in Republican states that protect children from the devastating consequences of irreversible treatments and surgeries that may lead them to being infertile for life. It's wrong that extreme officials are pushing hateful bills targeting transgender children, terrifying families and criminalizing doctors. These are our kids. They're our kids, really? You see, the president is all for radical bills like the one proposed in California that would take children as young as seven away from parents who fail to affirm their gender identity. It's almost communist in its perversity, this notion that children belong to the state. Well, the Ron DeSantis camp did not take too kindly to their efforts to protect children being presented as hate, nor did they like the president referring to our kids. This was their blistering response. These are our kids. These are our neighbors. Not somebody else's kids. They're all our kids. When you see our kids, and I truly believe that they are our children. LGBTQ Americans, especially children, you're loved. You're heard, and this administration has your back. I've, we met before. It's Great. hard to forget those eyes. These are our kids. Not somebody else's kids. They're all our kids. Keep your <laughs> hands off our kids. The message couldn't be clearer from the Florida governor. Despite all of his gaffes, the Democrats are still standing behind their president for now. But how long before bumbling Biden is shuffled out? Paul Murray and contributor Nigel Farage weigh in. Joe Biden, he trips over on a sandbag, um, yet apparently he's absolutely going to sail through to the Democratic nomination. And then we've got four years more of him after that. Conversely, we know what's happening with Trump right now. But honestly, the fact that the Democrats can't find somebody else to shuffle out, because the Democrats simultaneously tell us that Trump or DeSantis are worst ever and anyone could beat them. Well, then let anyone fight them. Why does it have to be Biden? I don't think it will be. Um, I don't think it will be. Uh, I mean, the fact that the... The fact, of course, that the deputy, uh, you know, the vice president isn't up to the job is an embarrassment as it is. I think he'll be shuffled out at some point early next year and replaced with somebody else. I think to do so now would be to admit that they have an incompetent president. It would lead to calls... Or the 25th Amendment to be moved, which would say for a mental and physical incapacity the president had to go. So, no, I do not believe that it'll be Biden against Trump in November 2024. 
Goodness knows who they'll choose. Maybe Gavin Newsom from the failed state of California. I don't know. I cannot believe that the Democrat Party and its donors will allow this man to run again. Sky News host Chris Kenny and contributor Kristen Tate agree. They say the Democrats are very worried about Joe Biden's mental state behind the scenes, even more so because the next in charge, Kamala Harris, is even less popular. Talk about good news for Trump and the Republicans generally, I suppose. Uh, when you talk about the concerns about uh, Joe Biden's mental capacity, his ability to not only last this term, but to serve as president for another four years after that, you couldn't have it confirmed, those worries confirmed any more dramatically than this event on the weekend. This is such a worry, Kristen. Uh, anyone can fall over, but he is really doddering around everywhere so very carefully. Interesting to see how little the media makes of this and compare it to how much of a fuss they made out of <laughs> Donald Trump, you know, carefully walking down a ramp when he was president. Oh, they're all such hypocrites, Chris. But I will say that behind the scenes, Democrats are very concerned about this. Nearly every left winger that I speak to, even the most, uh, you know, loyal Joe Biden supporters are very worried about his mental health. And people are starting to wonder if Kamala Harris uh, is really, you know, the best running mate for him because her polls are in the toilet. She's never been particularly popular, even among Democrats. She was a complete dud in the Democratic primary. And I think there are lots of voters out there, especially independents who are saying, this guy does not seem like he is going to last for the next four to six years. And if he goes, we are stuck with Kamala Harris. And that is a terrifying prospect to many Americans. So even though the media is saying, oh, this is no big deal, everyone trips and falls, they are worried about this. This is a serious problem. And for the first time after that that last fall, because that was so bad and, and the media really couldn't ignore it, I'm starting to hear people talk about his mental health in a way that they were not before. And final say goes to Joe Rogan. The podcaster slammed the president and the clear double standards in mainstream media reporting about Trump versus Biden. Now to giant podcaster Joe Rogan. You would have heard of this guy. He's got the most listened to podcast in the world. Well, he was talking very recently this week about the difference between how the media talks about Trump versus Biden. He was taking on the media establishment saying, hey, there's a massive dichotomy. How you analyse everything Trump does versus everything Biden. Biden does. Here he is. If you go back and listen to that guy lying about his his, his uh, education record and lying about his accomplishments, and like he's always been a problem. The ties to Ukraine and China and the money, the family that they got paid millions of dollars, and everyone's trying to obscure it because well, it's better than Trump. Better than Trump. If that guy was a Republican, they would be up his ass oh. with a microscope. I mean, I think the problem is that, first of all, the media is overwhelmingly left-leaning. And if you have a left-leaning politician or a left-wing Democratic politician, and then you have this media that yeah. essentially works to support that person, I mean, they, they ignore any information that leads to distrust in the government.